Now it's time for us to get into um, some conversations uh, of things happening around the country. Now, one of the top, one of the important things for us to discuss, you know, for us here at Chadawan TV, the focus is on telling your story um, and thereby empowering change. One of the things that bothers us a lot in this country, and we've not seemed to figure out how to solve it, is the conversations around wash, water, sanitation, and hygiene. Mm -hmm. Now, Jifa, I think that um, as much as various aspects of government, ministries, and so on, NGOs in particular as well, have put in a lot of effort, right? We, we still tend to find that even in places like the capital city, mm. we have challenges. Mm. You know, we have challenges with water, we have challenges sanitation. with sanitation, right. we have challenges with hygiene, mm. you know. Anyway, so we have the story that we want to um, take, take a look at, okay? The story um, is by our correspondent, um, Shawana Yusuf, and we're looking at school facilities, okay? And uh, community members taking over school washrooms, mm. school toilets, right? This is happening in the northern region. And so we want to take a look at this. We'll come back and then we'll delve further into the conversation. Many community members have resorted to sharing school toilet facilities within the Tamale Metropolis and San Narugu municipality. A visit to some schools revealed their toilets and urinals in unhygienic conditions with teachers and students blaming the indiscriminate use of the facilities by community members. Students spoke to Channel One News about the impact on their lives. If we get our menstruation, we will not be able to use it because the toilets are not good and the community people are using it to be toileting. And if you see inside, it's too dirty. And girls, if you get your menstruation, and you want to use it, unless you go to the community, the community people house to use someone room. We need the help to get our toilet facilities well. Even though when we get to the toilet facilities, we feel scared. We don't have any place to go to toilets. Head teacher of Young Duck Family RCJHS, Mr. Nonjenu, expressed frustration over the situation, noting that donors of these facilities are unhappy with their current state. He mentioned that reptiles have taken over the toilet facilities due to their poor condition, causing some individuals to use the urinals to relieve themselves. A lot of snakes have entered through the crack inside. So when you go, you will be hunted by snakes, especially the toilet. But the urinal pit, as we said, now because they don't use the, the toilet, the, some, some of the community members now go into the urinal pit to escape there. So it has made the place very filthy and then we cannot also enter there. Meanwhile, NGOs in the northern region involved in providing these facilities for schools have expressed disappointment over the poor maintenance culture. Madame Esther Boating, Regional Programs Manager for Action Aid, told Channel One News that her organization has redrawn its decision to provide new wash facilities to schools. Instead, they would support schools financially to manage the existing ones, believing this approach would improve sustainability at both school and community levels. She made this known to Channel One News during a cash donation to eight beneficiary schools in the Tamale Metropolis and San Narugo municipality to help reconstruct their toilets and urinals. We've seen that when you go, it's not good you provide. The next time you go, they expect that, oh, the facility you provided is not in good condition. And everybody expects that you come and maintain it for them. So we decided that we will support them. It's just a support to see how they will manage their funds. For sustainability's sake, if they do it themselves, if they go through the process to look for money, if they all contribute to do themselves, they will take good care of it. The chef coordinator at the Sanarugo Education Directorate, Ruka Al-Hassan, is hopeful that 
involving the community in finding a lasting solution to the problem confronting wash facilities and schools would help prevent vandalization by community members. He described the financial support given to schools by Action Aid as timely. Currently, the state of wash in the Sanarbu schools is not different from other districts, but most of them are in bad state due to lack of maintenance. And it's as a result of community vandalization, if I can say. So this donation and then this project itself has come at the right time because community is being involved. The beneficiary schools include Yondatramili RCJHS, John Shagu Anglican Junior High School, Wayamba RC Junior High School, Kapaile Taskiv Primary. The rest are Yondatramili RC Primary, Bene MA Primary, Narong AME Zion Primary, and Banvum Presby Primary. All right, so there you saw. Um very unsightly um, it was uncomfortable to watch you know very unsightly um, toilets washrooms that we expect children mm. of school going age to use and of course community members you know and if you understand Tamale very well and it maybe it's not even so different from some of some other towns and cities that we have the communities, the schools are within the community. So the communities are around, you know, the housing is around. And so people literally, there's no, and the schools are hardly walled, mm. right? So you find that, that we are passing from your house to your friend's house, mm. and you're passing through the school, the school you know, yeah. literally. You know, and as you saw in some of the images there, people just, you know, crisscross it. So it's very common to find communities in and around the school. But we need to do better. You know, and we have um, our correspondent who brought us that story, uh, Shawana Yusif. Um, she's joined us on the line. Shawana, good morning. Hi, good morning, David. And good morning. Right now, Shawana, the um, the story that you brought us, give us a sense of what um, the authorities, let's say Ghana Health, Ghana Education Service. Uh, municipal assemblies and so on, if you've been in touch with them and what any of them are saying about dealing with this problem. All right, thank you. So I spoke to the chair coordinator at the, the Samarubo Municipal Education Office and what she tells me is that usually community members intentionally vandalize these properties as in they take over the wash facilities in the schools mm. as a means to punish maybe school authorities for something they stand that they think is not right. Because they go there to use the washrooms and they tell them, don't use it. So, okay, then when you close, you will come and mess the place up. And then the next day, you see how you take care of them. Mm. According to uh, Mother Asia, we can we spoke to us on this issue. She made it known to us that usually the in an engagement they had with community members and some of these school authorities, what came up on a one-on-one -on -one discussion with some of the community members was that it was more of a form of punishment to the some of them to the school to let them understand that if the toilet facility is situated within our community, we should also have access and don't prevent us from using it. And the way when the two people are closed, or when it is the weekend, or when uh, they are on recess, they come and use the facility. But the most shocking part was, uh, David, when I visited your back community and some other schools in the Sanaru municipality, broad daylight, when students and teachers were in school, community members were visiting or going to the toilet in and out without any permission, without, I mean, it was a normal thing for them. Mm. And when I tried engaging some of the community members, what they told me off camera was that they thought the facility is supposed to be for them and the school because it is in their community. So mm. they thought they were supposed to share it with the students. So Sh this is the problem most schools are facing within the Tamale um, um, metropolis and Sanaru municipality. And they've kept this facility in a very unhygienic condition, said that 
even the students cannot use it. Personally, yeah. when I went to do my work, trust me, within the few minutes I had to go there to get some cutaways of the place. Mm -hmm. It took me so much time to be able to get my own throat back. Wow. Because it was so unhygienic that I couldn't even see myself drinking water at any moment from that time. Wow. The facilities were so, so bad. Yeah. And I can just imagine what those children go through on a daily basis in mm. these facilities. Shawana, um, tell us, how is the housing system in Tamale like? Is it that the community members don't have toilet facilities in their homes? What's the housing yes. system like? Well, so, um, as for household toilets, if you come to the Tamale Metropolis and the Sanargo Municipality, they are lagging behind when it comes to household toilets. There are a lot of houses that are still living without toilet facilities, though NGOs have come up with initiatives to help them get these facilities at the um, high prices where they are able to pay in bits to be able to, to finish paying up for these facilities. But most of the houses don't go in for it. They prefer mm. to use public toilets, they prefer to do open defecation and to get anywhere in the bush to feed themselves is what they enjoy doing. So in the coming days we'll be looking at those ones too. I'll do an extensive story to see when we can have data wise how many households are without these facilities. But from what I see and from what I hear um, on daily basis, I know and I can see that most houses are built without, but most of them don't even go for a building permit. They don't, there is no any inspection to indicate that hmm. this house must have a select facility. And what stakeholders are even telling us is that. All these schools that were built in the past, they didn't have that um, structural assessment to ensure that all the needed facilities are in place. So most of these schools would spring up without toilet or uh, urinal facilities. So it took the intervention of NGOs who operate mostly in these areas, Action Aid, um, USAID, most of them, to come and support these schools with these facilities. So for the schools, they are interested in them, they are trying to manage them, and the households too, they are trying to give them the platform to be able to get these facilities for themselves. But most of the landlords are not up and doing. They rather prefer to go and pay 50 pesos, 30 pesos at the public toilet, and then go and free themselves and leave. Wow. Um, Shawana, before I let you go, I'm very much concerned about the fact that there's, there's some sort of carefree attitude when it comes to open defecation. Uh, do you by yeah. any chance know if the local authorities are doing any sensitization on this issue? Because it's not a good thing for our environment. Exactly. It's not a good thing. That I can assess. But um, from the Metro Assembly perspective, um, they will tell you that that is why they have gone into... Um, partnership with the private sector to be able to make funding available for households to access so that they can also put up facilities and resources in their homes. But the individuals or the households are not affected. They are not going in for the support to make sure that the facilities are built. But from the last time I had an interaction with the sanitation um, director at the Tamale Metro office, Hadja was telling me that they are now trying to let the bylaws work. So the houses that do not have these facilities would, would be punished in one way or the other so that they will find the need to get them as quickly as possible, at least to protect our own environment and also for the world of the people who are living in these households. Wow. All right. So, so Shawana, I mean, I think that um, I, I really feel you know, um, for you having to have dealt with this, hmm. you know, nasty experience. Um, but yeah. um, the and talk to us about the place of the NGOs vis-a-vis uh, -vis the duty bearers. So we know what the education ministry, is, uh, sorry, Ghana Education Service is supposed to be doing. We know what the municipal assembly is supposed to be doing. But uh, it seems as though Without the NGOs, the uh, 
municipal assemblies or the schools, I should say rather, would, would suffer a fate that is like they've been left, they've been abandoned, they've been left to their own um, resources. So, um, when it comes to media literacy, I think it's the capital where I reside. Yeah. You just, it takes twice as much effort to get things done. Unlike in the certain part where authorities just need to tell you you have to get a household toilet, then, I mean, a landlord will see the need to get a that. Mm. Yes, you have to take twice as much effort. So you see that um, the NGOs usually try as much as possible to work with duty bearers, to work with people in the community, to make sure that they understand the, the idea or the reason why they have to be doing this. Now, an NGO goes to donate the facility to a school, and then they are not being kept well, not by the students, but by the community members. So what they have now, they are now saying is that we don't want to give them the school anymore, because we notice that when we put our resources into these facilities, mm. they don't manage them well. And guess what? They even come back to tell us that the facilities are in poor condition, so help us to revise them. Mm. So what they are telling them is that we don't want to give you the money to do it again. Yeah. We would rather want that. we don't want to give you the facilities, hand over the facilities to you. But we want to see you putting in an effort yeah. to keeping the facilities in good use so that we would give you the funding to go ahead to do that. So I think this is the point we've gotten to. And you can see that these um, NGOs even have the funding to get these done. I just think fed up to the way things are being done. And it's more like they're taking a step backward and waiting to see how things will be managed if they are being owned by the community and these um, schools that, that, that are affecting this problem. Mm. So for the resources, we have a lot of NGOs in this area who are interested in what we feel, but they feel, they feel disappointed by the way things are being run right mm. now. Exactly. Okay. Okay. All right, Shawana, thank you very much um, for this uh, report. Thank you so much, David. Yeah. Oh, yeah, thank you very much for this report um, and for bringing it to light. I think it's so important for us to, to uh, have seen this, mm -hmm. you know, because we keep speaking about the challenges with open defecation and all yeah. that. Then you provide facilities, mm -hmm. but look at the state in mm -hmm. which you find, you find these facilities and look at how the, the attitude of pe yeah. persons, yeah. you know, um, who should know better mm -hmm. and it's like we have so I'm seeing a number of things here we have facilities for the school school yes maybe we should look at putting up facilities for the community, for the community. right do you see so that look you have yours the school the school has, has his, his. Yeah. do not touch the school's mm -hmm. one right because now you're saying that even though the, the community doesn't have its own mm -hmm. The school has one, but the community should not come and use the school right. one. You know, and the community is saying that, well, the school, school is ours, the washrooms mm -hmm. are ours, you're all within our community, you can't tell us what not to do. But we could trust me, that's a very bad way of looking at things because, I mean, it is for the school. Mm. So if you want one, I mean, gone were the days where we used to do communal labor to, to, to build up some of these things for ourselves. So you can't have... Uh, the mentality that if you won't let us use it, you close from school, right? Mm. You would see what you come and mm. meet the following mm. morning. Mm. That's very wrong. And to think that these are your children, yeah. they live with you. Yeah. And you go about messing up their place of convenience, defecating openly and all of that. And I don't know if it is lack of education or ignorance because open defecation is mm. not a good thing. It's, it breeds I, I diseases. It's, I don't think it's either. What I think it's wickedness. I mean, contamination. <laughs> I it's, it's wickedness and sheer, Food sheer, and water sheer contamination, you can't diseases. Like that, you so know. why would you think that yeah. it is okay to do it in the public, to do it in the open? Why? Yeah. I don't, I don't even understand yeah. how they are thinking. And I think, moving on, if uh, the school is able to revamp their facilities, mm. there should be a, a proper security system. That it should be under lock and key. Yeah. I, I, I think we should uh, have a word with mm. the action aid people because you know the well Esther Boating who is the Northern Regional uh, Programs Manager for Action Aid has joined us on the line. Esther good morning. Hello Esther. 
Hello. Hello, good morning. Welcome to Breakfast Daily. Good morning. Yeah, so um, Esther, the question that I have uh, is really simple. Um, the uh, school has had challenges with its um, facilities. Um, you're not putting up any new ones. You're deciding rather to support them to maintain the old ones. Are you not enabling the continuity of this poor maintenance culture? No, please. Talk to us about the rationale. Why are you giving them the money? Yes, uh, these are schools we've been working with for a very long time. Okay. Some we feel to be a sanitary facility, some other, the district of family and other people. So we set out to look at the sanitary facilities in their schools. Mm. And we visited about 57 schools in family and primary school. And our findings show a, a very large gap mm. of the use of these facilities in the school because of lack of maintenance culture. Mm. So we engage the schools, we engage the years, we engage assembly, and we engage the community. We work and they do their own action plan that they are going to take to be able to work on these facilities. So what we did was we were monitoring how they were implementing their own action plan. And when we went around, we saw some of the schools taking action. Mm. PCA uh, collecting money to work on these things by themselves okay. and by the teacher people of these communities. Okay. And so we thought it was a very good initiative. And some of them, the amount involved was a lot. Some of the schools will not be able to get money to do it. Okay. So we told them that if you have started something and you need something small to finish up with it, we will support you. Mm. And that's why we gave the, them the money for them to own the project, to learn how to maintain these things and not to leave them and you go and build another one for them. Mm. For sustainability and for ownership, that's why we gave them the money. Right. Now, um, in terms of policing what they do um, and making sure that the monies are put to good use, um, do you have a rigorous system in place? Because it's, for me, I'm more concerned about um, throwing money into a bottomless pit, as it were, where if you, if, I'm glad to hear that you have some stories of persons and schools where they were already doing, you know, they, had, they already took initiative to do the maintenance, and so you are supporting them. But from the images that we saw, this school doesn't look like a school that's interested in maintaining um, its facilities. Then comes the conversation about, what about putting up maybe a facility for the community members that then keeps them away from the school uh, facilities? Yeah, we are working with DES. Okay. DES coordinators are monitoring what they are doing okay. it's in the, their own account. Mm. So DES will be monitoring. We ourselves will also be monitoring what they are doing. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, um, the issue of, have you considered it, putting up maybe in some communities where the community members um, are going into the school property to go and use their wash facilities. Um, have you considered maybe set, putting up public washrooms in within the community that allows the school ones to be, you know, um, just for the school? Yeah, we are in touch with the district assembly, community members, and other stakeholders. We cannot build wash facilities for a whole community. Okay. It's in the assembly by law that every house will have a washroom. Yes. So for us, we are working with the assembly in dealing with that. Our concern more is in the schools. Mm. Girls are there. They need changing rooms. They need toilet facilities. Yeah. And our 
school. So if the community is taking over, when they even lock it, they close school and lock it, community will come and break it and use the facility. Mm. So if there is an ongoing advocacy and working with the assembly to see how we can uh, stop that. But yeah. it's very widespread in Tamil. Wow. Widespread. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time this morning. And that was um, Esther Boateng. She is uh, the Northern yeah, yeah. Regional Programs Manager for Action Aid. Jiva. You, you saw my reaction yes. when she said that even when the, the facilities are under lock and key, yeah. the community members come and break it. And I'm like, how? Mm. See, I thought it was ignorance, but now I agree with you when you said it's it was it's wickedness. wickedness yeah, because wickedness. why would you do this to mm. your own? Ch these are your children yes. in the schools. Yes. These are your children using the facilities. Mm. And I like the fact that uh, Esther mentioned the girls because, yeah. look, girls pick up infections. Yeah. They pick up diseases yeah. when they use these facilities very often. So if they are going to be exposed to all of these health hazards mm. and you don't even think about it, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering what their health status mm. or right. their health yeah. conditions are like yeah. in the school but yeah. um I, I like the fact that again action aid has been able to lend them a helping hand mm. to support them with some fund to help renovate these um facilities and i hope that this would serve as some sort of a motivation or a lesson to them so that when the renovations are done yeah. there's a sense of accountability mm. there's a sense of sustainability so okay. that in the next two three five years yeah. we don't go back exactly. to see these exactly. stories of, I mean, the, the facilities mm, being in these mm, states. It's, it's mm, sad. Mm. Anyway. All right.